Good morning, and welcome to this first Worship on Wednesday meditation for 2021. It's good to have everyone back. I know that the, our students right now are in a, um, a quarantine situation in uh, their uh, rooms uh, for until the end of January, uh, which uh, was a very wise move on part of the university and its COVID risk team um, to uh, protect all students in this way. So I'm hoping that uh, our students are doing well. I know it's, it's difficult to be isolated um, as we have been for, oh gosh, since uh, March of last year, maybe even before that. Uh, I do want to uh, say this, though, that um, um, I was given permission uh, from the COVID risk um, to uh, actually provide you with a lunch today. So all the students who are here on campus, uh, you can come grab and go a lunch um, uh, as, a, with a, as a gift from the, the chapel. Uh, the lunch will be available at, at noon. Uh, so come and grab a lunch and uh, you can take it back to your, uh, to your uh, residence um, and uh, enjoy. Uh, we are praying for you and praying for this university as it continues to navigate this COVID. And in fact, which I want to say once more, I'm very proud of our university for how they have navigated this uh, situation. Well, as we begin a uh, new semester, as we begin a new year, as we begin politically a, a new presidency on this very day, uh, we move forward. We look forward, and we are guided uh, by, actually, uh, it, uh, as I was looking at uh, Proverbs, I'm, I want to have us look a bit at Proverbs uh, this semester. As I was looking at the very first uh, seven verses of Proverbs, it struck me that um, the wisdom of our, uh, the founders of the university, uh, particularly as uh, as it became the University of Tulsa in 1921. On the motto of um, our seal, uh, the motto on our seal is wisdom, faith, and service. And if you look at the original, one of the original uh, stained glass versions of that seal, and you'll see it on the, on the, the uh, student uh, uh, study area on the second floor of McFarland Library, you will find that there is a little dot or a, a what I call a hyphen, the way that they did it, where wisdom and faith are hyphenated in, together. That is uh, significant, um, and it goes back to actually what we read in Proverbs. Our university is grounded in this understanding that uh, our wisdom, our faith, our knowledge is, um, is guided both physically but metaphysically so that uh, we're guided uh, by the gift of the minds that we have been given to think, uh, to uh, pursue understandings and ideas it lifts us up out of the, uh, the mire of uh, the political, the uh, secular, and it, it lifts us up to be reflective. And that actually, the lifting up is actually a gift of the metaphysical. It's a gift from our God. It allows us to step back and to view the uh, foibles and the difficulties of the human condition, and we've seen it this year. It's um, been hard with COVID. Uh, it's been very difficult. Uh, it's been hard with uh, the political situation, the tragic nature of our situation, uh, particularly within the last few weeks. We need to step back and we need to uh, look with a broader perspective we need to look through the eyes of our God, through his word, that uh, regrounds us each and every day. As uh, many 
say as they rise in the morning, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That is what should be on our lips each day. It is a day that the Lord has made. And yes, we should be glad in it. The gladness. Let's look at uh, uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 1. Look at the, the first seven verses, which really are an entry to, uh, uh, to the Proverbs that uh, as Solomon uh, uh, has them recorded uh, in the book of Proverbs. Uh, the first seven verses kind of cat, uh, capture the uh, trajectory, uh, in particular the first nine chapters, but the trajectory of Proverbs. Um, it's a trajectory that calls the human condition who has faith in a metaphysical in God to understand wisdom, to begin to understand the knowledge that is needed com uh, uh, combined with faith that provides us the understanding, the ability to step back wisdom. Well, anyway, um, before, as, uh, before we uh, move into these first seven verses, let's offer a word of prayer. Oh, Lord, we are grateful once more to be able to gather with uh, everyone by way of this virtual platform. We're grateful that uh, you have guided our hearts and continue to guide our hearts and continue to comfort us continue to provide us with wisdom that is generated out of uh, uh, faith uh, that uh, engages knowledge, that understands the larger perspective, your perspective. Um, be with us this semester, our students, our faculty, our staff, our administration, as we continue to navigate this very um, uncertain time. A lot of uh, bright spots, Lord, we give thanks for, for the vaccine that is coming and is here, and uh, we pray its effectiveness. We thank you for the minds that uh, had the expertise that you have provided uh, that has uh, helped generate this vaccine to combat this deadly pandemic. Watch over us this semester. Be particularly with our students ones who seek knowledge, ones that are here because they seek wisdom. May that be provided by the wonderful faculty we have, by the compassionate staff that we have supporting our students, and by an administration uh, with a clear uh, view to our future. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 1, 1, it uh, opens with uh, a, the acknowledgement of who uh, produces these Proverbs. They are produced by King Solomon, Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, uh, writing in uh, uh, the um, latter to middle part of uh, the 10th century of B.C. Um, these are uh, wonderful reflections. Uh, of uh, drawing us into how we live a full, whole life in, uh, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, the first um, verses 2 through 7 actually give us a foundation for the book of Proverbs. Uh, these Proverbs, these wisdom writings, these wisdom sayings, uh, are, are put forward or offered by Solomon uh, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand insight, words of insight. Insight is um, something that uh, we try to do well here at the university, in which we take a reflective step back. The ability to see uh, beyond just the physical, the, the, the ability to see and understand how things fit together, the ability to see and understand the bigger picture, um, so that uh, the words of insight to re receive, uh, to understand those, is uh, is really a purpose here for these 
Proverbs to lift us to that insight. We're to receive instruction in wise dealing, very practical, as we speak about, as Solomon will speak about, things that are wise, things that are filled with wisdom, things that are reflective and understand the broader scope of ones who live their, of ones who live their faith in the Lord God and live it in their lives. The, uh, it gives, these Proverbs are to give very practical instruction for living that faith. Um, to receive instruction also in righteousness, justice, and equity, which is the moral life. Uh, this is to understand that the moral life is not the life that we contrive as human beings uh, by political ideologies, but the moral life is the life that is contrived for us, made for us, uh, that is uh, called uh, upon us uh, if, uh, to live uh, a, a way that is a transcendent uh, understanding so that we live not to ourselves, but we live to our Lord God. It is to, uh, to give prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion to the youth. This, um, all of these wisdom writings are for everyone. They're for those who um, may have a, a naivete uh, in how they uh, uh, see the world uh, or a, a, a Pollyannish type of seeing of the world. These can help guide them uh, beyond the naive. They can also guide those who have not had the ability or been given the opportunity uh, to, um, to understand uh, ideas and uh, opportunities uh, to live as the Lord desires. So that these Proverbs are not for the intellectual, although they are for those who perhaps uh, think with a, uh, with a more cognitive, reflective component. They're for everyone. That's, that's the beauty of Proverbs. They are for everyone, and that's what Solomon wishes for us to understand. He says, let the wise hear and increase in learning. Those who have been provided or have the, the gift of uh, reflective thought, that they might increase that. I mean, we're all here together. Uh, each of us have various levels of knowledge and skills, abilities, but they are all worked together for good. And that's what we must make sure to, uh, to understand, that each and every one of us here as creatures are important. No one is better than another. And each, we work together. Uh, that's a word that we must hear today within our country that we are here to join hands and hearts as we serve each other, but most importantly, as we serve the Lord. And the one who understands obtains guidance. The one who is able to understand that these words of Solomon, these Proverbs, have a very special presence, um, the presence that will give guidance that will lift us up out of the mire of the tragic human, uh, to lift us up and give us the guidance, the insight that our Lord requires of us. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and the riddles. Um, the proverbs themselves, as, as he writes, they really are... Uh, Wisdom for probing thought. Um, they are to, they to, are to engage us to think with greater uh, uh, breadth uh, and depth, to become reflective about how we live, which today is a critical uh, need. How do we engage each other? 
how do we see the other as one of us? I mean, literally, we are all human creatures. How do we engage each other? How do we care for each other? I, I love the way our, our motto is on our seal, wisdom, faith, combined together, providing, uh, which then provides service. How do we serve one another? How do we care? That's a question that I think is uh, terribly critical for us today. We have uh, heard uh, the, the, the wonderful uh, statement of uh, Fred Rogers, which is when, you, when uh, you see the tragic and the trauma, look for the helpers. I might suggest that when we see the tragic and the trauma, that we look for those who serve, not only to engage to help and assist, but we look to those who are serving, who are actually laying their lives out for someone else. I mean, that's the hope that we have because we have a number of folks who have served. The medical staff, our physicians, um, the guidance uh, for uh, to give us the understanding of how to face uh, this um, pandemic. We have a lot of folks who serve, but I see a lot of, but I also see those who serve by realizing the struggles that many are faced with as a result of this pandemic, the struggle for food, struggle for shelter, the struggle for human um, interaction, to know the human heart of someone else, to know that that heart is beating for them, to care for them. He ends this section with, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord, uh, it's regrettable that has been taken and probably has been uh, the reality of it is that some ministers have actually used it in, a, in, a, in the sense of cowering in fear, uh, which is regrettable. The fear of the Lord is actually to submit in humility to what the Lord desires for us. It is to give reverence. It is to be obedient. Uh, we do not cower. We understand that we are not God, literally, obviously. But we are subject to one who is transcendent. The one is very, who's very imminent, who is, who came to us, and that uh, we live um, out of that uh, sense of awe and wonder, and that sense of submission to a higher calling of, of wisdom, of faith, of serving. So that the, the proverbs that that. Uh, Solomon writes, are ones to provide us with understanding. The understanding of how we live. How we live uh, morally, how we live ethically, how we live compassionately, how we live obediently. Living for each other, but living for each other in the Lord's name. Well, I pray for you a a wonderful semester. I pray that you feel the experience of prayers that are surrounding you, the cloud of witnesses that are praying for you, particularly our students. And we give thanks this day for this is the Lord's day. We give thanks that he is in charge, that he is guiding us. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are grateful for this time, a time that where we can literally engage your word to us, a word that draws us away from our self-focused desires and, and draws us to obedience, to the understanding of fear, of awe, of realizing we are not you, that we stand before you, 
that we stand in your presence. We stand, better yet, we kneel in obedience to your call and claim on our life. Be with us, we pray. Watch over our students. Watch over our faculty. Watch over our staff. Watch over our administration. Watch over our board. Watch over this dear place we call the University of Tulsa. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, once more, please, if, uh, uh, if you have a moment and you would like, come and grab a lunch. Uh, we wish to feed you, not only with words of wisdom from Scripture, but feed you physically to give you strength, to give you energy. May you stay healthy. May you stay warm. Most of all, may you stay whole. We look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye.